How you doing guys? It's been a while. So this 350Z is a one car, one owner car. Um, it's got a little bit of rust. It's basically like the common sort of area for these, these cars. So I want to tidy it up for the customer so we can put it up for sale. The only issue we've got is it's about five different shades of blue. So obviously the top panels are sort of plastic and the metal and the sun cooks it in different ways and then it changes and fades. So I'm going to be blending to the door and the bumper. So I want to match to the bumper, the bumper and the door and I'll take you through the process of everything I'm doing. So let's crack on. All right guys, so before I put the car in the air, I want to check the color code. So I've had a little look and I found the VIN plate. So the VIN plate is in the engine bay, just here. You can see it on the camera. And the color code says B17. So what I do is now I'll go over to my computer system and then I'll check on there as well. And it'll tell me which box I can choose from on the color charts. So yeah, excuse the mess, this is my little colour system. So what I do is I go on here, check the colour, and there it is, B17, and it says box one. So then I'll go over to here, go over to box one, check this out, oh there it is, and let's check the colour. Oh! <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Can you see then, so this is a lighter blue to this panel, you can tell it's been painted before, because if I show you you might be able to see, there's a little bit of crazing in the paint, and obviously it's just where it's pulled back over time. But this is sort of faded, and then you can see the difference here as well. So you've got blue, light blue, and then this matches the original colour. So it's a big problem you get, which people don't really see. So the problem is, I'm going to, well, it's not a problem, I'm going to be painting this area, but now I've had to quote to obviously blend the bumper for the customer. And it's just explaining to people why we're blending the panel. Because if I, if I paint it, and the colour's off still, then you'll you'll look at the you won't even look at the repair. You'll just make you'll complain about the colour being off. So and even the front door. Can you see it is slightly off here? So that's more like a purpley blue, that's more of like a lighter blue if you can see from the camera. So what I'll do is once I've done the panel, I'll paint this whole panel, blend it, blend into the door, blend into the bumper, and then I'm happy. The only issue is obviously it's still gonna be off to here, but you just have to live with it. And it's just the same both sides then anyway. And the thing is, obviously, you've got to weigh up between how much you want to spend and how much you're going to make on the car when you sell it. So, guys, the next stage now is to get the car in the air a little bit, get the wheel off, and then I can take all the panels off. Obviously, the light off, the fuel flap, and then I can take the paint back to check how bad the rust is. And I can get a little camera as well. So what I usually do is put the camera inside and see how rusty it is. Because otherwise, if I cut the metal out and there's rust further along, it's kind of pointless, you know what I mean? So. Let's get, it, let's get it stripped and we can get to the next stage. <laughs> you can try to save yourself, but you want to go play yourself. You can try to save yourself, but you want to go play yourself. You can try to save yourself, but you want to go play yourself. You can try to save yourself, but you want to go play yourself. You will need a hundred men, hundred scopes, hundred cans just for you to watch what I'm doing under the sun again. God giving gift, them seeds doing the running man. If you want me to get it, pop it may cost a hundred pence. Yeah, what I supply is always in demand. To be fair, this has been such a good car to buy. It's not actually that bad behind the arch as well. So you can see a bit of discoloring here with rust. So what I'm gonna do is clean this up, treat it, and then I'll paint it as well, obviously with um, either a Raptor bed liner on this arch or depending on what I decide to do. So clean all this mud out of here. So not too bad for how the car is. Obviously you can see it just here. So I'll put a rust converter on it. It's not eating into the metal. It's literally just where the stone chips have gone over with time and it's just on the surface. So clean it up, treat it, and then I'll put something over the top of it. All right, so guys, on to the next stage. I'm gonna 80 grit sand this whole area back. I just wanna pay, take it back to bare metal because I can sort of tell there's probably filler or a lot of product on this panel. So we'll take this area back. If I think it's really bad, I'll put the camera behind anyway. So we'll just check it out, but yeah, let's get this done. All right guys, so I've obviously sanded it back a bit. I can see a bit of rust in this spot here. So I'll bring you closer to show you. I don't want to put too many 80 grit scratches into the bare metal. So what I like to do is take it back and then I use a 120 to sort of dress the metal up, then a 180 and I'm happy then. But um, 
this area here you can see is quite deep so what this would need doing is cutting out and you'd have to put a new section in but this is all looking pretty good but what I was explaining is imagine I cut this area out here there can actually be rust here as well so you might as well check it and make sure there's no rust in any of the rest of the panel because otherwise you'll do this and then it'll rust a couple of months later or a year a couple of years later in another area so um, obviously I'm painting this panel so as well so I'm going to clean this whole arch all the way around to here and sort this out as well but you can see guys there's a bit of filler work that's been done before it's not a lot it's only thin which is fine it's absolutely fine you can use filler it's not a problem but you can see it's pinched back a bit so with a flat and polish just would have came back up but I want to take this whole area back and start fresh so let's get it off Guys, like I've said in a lot of previous videos, filler is not an issue at all. You can use filler, it doesn't matter, it's really good. Um, obviously, it's been well designed now. The only thing is, it's about how much you load it in. You want to put a fine skim, you want to put as least in as possible. There's a lot of filler in here, and I think they, all they've done is they've put it over the rust. The problem is, if you put fiberglass or fill it over rust, what will happen is, it'll just start rusting again, and then it'll bob all the filler up then, so you'll have a bump instead, and that's exactly what's happened here. I've worked in a lot of places, I call them backstreet garages or like not backstreet garages but like I've worked in a lot of rough places and I've seen a lot of the guys who just skim over fill it like over rust because someone's gone for a cheaper option and it's just all come back through so guys I'm going to take this right back check it that might not even be it might not even need all the filler in it feels a bit quite thick over here as well so I'll take this right back check it pin pull it cut this rust out and then I'll make my own and I will still put filler in it. Obviously, I'll try and do as best metal finish as I can on it within the time. I'll take this back, do a nice repair on it, and then so on. See how, see how, let's see how much filler is in there. Right, guys, so I've just used my camera just to check behind the panel. You see, obviously, I've took the, the vent off, but you definitely want to buy one of these. If you're doing rust repairs, I would show you how it works while I'm filming with my phone at the moment, so. Obviously, that ain't gonna work. But yeah, guys, you can put it up underneath. It's done through Bluetooth as well. You put it behind. I can literally see that the rust is literally just here and further along. So that's great. And obviously, taking the trim off now, I can obviously stop it. When I'm welding, I can just keep checking and blowing anything out if there's a fire. Obviously, I'm gonna be taking some precautions anyway. But yeah, you could use it for a lot of things. Like I mean, like, oh, oh, <laughs> and I'm, but now I'm joking, all right. <laughs> all right, so these are the tools I'm gonna use to cut the panel off. Um, not the panel off, but like a little section out. Uh, so I always use a slitting disc or a aerosol. The good thing with an aerosol, you can do a smaller, thinner cut. The problem with the, um, the disc cutter, obviously it does a proper straight cut, which is great, but you can only go a certain, certain distance before it starts cutting through the other panel underneath. So with the aerosol, it's great because you can keep to just the outer layer, but this will just keep going deeper and deeper. You can keep it obviously to the surface, but if you want to go down further, then it's going to be cutting the inside panel. So you don't want to be doing that. So yeah, let's get a cut. Alright guys, so what I've done is I've put rust converter now inside the panels. Looking pretty good, that was pretty good. And yeah, I've put rust converter around the lip as well to keep the original spot welds. I want to, I want to keep it looking factory as well once it's finished. But I know for a fact if I, if I was to draw away from the spot welds on this whole car, there'd be rust in between the panels. So it's just down, down to how you preserve it and keep the moisture out as much as possible. So once I finish welding and I've painted it, I'm going to put a cavity paint down inside, then a cavity wax on top of it and it should slow any rust down in the future. All right, so on to the next stage. What I've done so far is, I've cut out the, obviously the affected area, I've checked it behind, and now I've put a weld through primer on to sort of go behind the panel. I've used it for a while, all this stuff, never had an issue with it, so just stick to what you know. So what I use now is use the old bits I've cut off as a reference. That's why you always go a bit further than the rust, because at least you can use it as a reference then. The panel's feeling awesome across here. Across here. It's just someone's done a, repair here, but they haven't pulled it out. They've just put filler in it. So I'm going to pin pull it out now, foil it, make sure that's good, make some new pieces for here. And I'll show you what I'm doing. So this is what I've done so far. Here's the old pieces. I'm just putting it here and choosing it as a reference. 
and then I can just draw around it and then cut the pieces out. All right, so this is why I always stress about doing bare metal resprays because look how many layers of paint there is. It's like, what do I do here? If I bare metal this whole panel, it's going to take ages and I've got to charge a customer for it. And then I'll lose the job, you know what I mean? Because he's probably got other prices elsewhere. And obviously somebody, a lot of my customers actually come to me because they want me to do it no matter what anyway. So that's a pretty good situation to be in. But if you look at it, look how many layers of paint there is. You've got the bare metal, you've got the etch, the primer, the base coat, and then the clear coat. And then you've got another paint layer. So what I'll do is I'll feather this in and obviously I'm gonna do my etch primer, high build primer, and then blend it in anyway. So it'd be fine. It's just, I don't like painting over a lot of material because you get sink back and stuff like that. But I'll bake it and heat the pan off anyway and just do the right procedure. But I just know over time, stuff like that doesn't always last. You know what I mean? But it's all right. Just depends how you look after it. My mind run deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it. Sleeping on the floor, wishing it was a mattress. Now I'm in Hollywood with actors and actresses where everybody bougie, latest trends and fashions. I'd rather keep it a buck. A hundred if you ask me. I was trying to pay the bills Jeez. just like last week. All right, so guys, I like to have a small gap because the problem is you want, well, you want to get penetration. So you want it to sort of, you want the weld to go in the gap as well. Because when it's too tight, sometimes it can push the panel out a little bit and then you get high spots, loose spots. So it's like a happy medium. Just get a, a small gap and that's kind of usually the best bit. So you can see it's a bit tighter here. So I'm going to belt sand the edge away from here a little bit and just this edge. And it should be nice and flush. All right, see if this piece fits as well. Jeez! So there's a bit of a swage on here, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to planish this round here, put a curve into it so it kicks out a little bit. The only problem is when I do that, it's going to bring it out a bit. So lucky enough, it's a very tight fit. So when I kick it, it'll bring it up a bit and I can planish it in and weld it. Like again, the better you get the metal work, the least filler. So once I tack this in, I won't let it get too hot. I'll move on to this one. Then I'll tack a bit more on this one and this one and then let it cool down. I can block, I'm going to block this into feather it, not with the DA, because it will just keep pushing the layers back. So I'll block it with a 120, 180, bring the lines back, and then I'll do a soft pad DA just to get the nice, consistent, smooth finish. All right, let's crack on. My story is a history. Now that's not a mystery. Stop without a hate and doubt, man, this is meant for me. Whatever come my way, this is meant for me. Trying to share my story, this is history. All right, so I'm just tacking a little bit at a time. I don't want to get too much heat into the panel. You can usually tell by running your hand over it, so you can still touch it. So when you're doing this as well, your welds don't look too good. Obviously, they look, you just want penetration, but you don't want to get it too hot. So once you belt sand it down, they're going to look good. So I'm just going to put a couple of tacks here, a couple there, leave it to cool down, and I'm going to start focusing on this a little minute. Hop in the car, watch it go. All right, so on to the next stage. So this came out really nice. So this area as well was pretty, pretty damaged. What I've done is I've built it out with a bit of weld and um, basically belt sanded it down, shaped it. Now it's feeling awesome. It just needs a little fine skim of filler. I'm gonna block this now and feather it and it'll be ready for primer. So let's get some filler in it. Block it, shape it, and then try the bumper on as well. Okay, just a little one as well, guys. If you're gonna ever buy any filler, don't waste your money on 20 pound tins or anything. Go and buy this one, this, this stuff here. What is it? Evercoat Rage Optex. It's amazing. And obviously, if you're pretty new to doing filler work or anything, it actually changes color when it goes off, so you know if it's gone off. But there's no, there's no problem with using filler. You wanna put as least in as possible. Obviously, your first skim, if you've done a build, you wanna put it in thicker so you can sand it off, take it all back off and then you're left with just a little bit left in the low spots. So also as well, if you've got any issues like this, it even says on the tin, you can actually blend it in to the paintwork. So once you've painted it, it won't sort of pull back through it, if you know what I mean. With primer, because there's so much thinners in, got so much thinners content in the primer, it will eat into your different layers and then that and it will appear over time. If you blend this in, then you'll, you'll basically eliminate that problem if that makes sense. Just drop in the comments if you need any info. 
All right, so guys, I've only got about a thousand subscribers. Um, what I'm trying to say is I'm not sponsored by anyone, so I'm not bullshitting you. This is the shit, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Obviously, if I'm done a full bare metal respray, what you do is you epoxy your primer, epoxy primer your panel first, prep it, and then do your repairs on the top. Because it's such a big area, what can happen is if you leave anything exposed like fillers and stuff like that, over time, moisture can be drawn into it. So that's why you want to keep your humidity good in your shop and stuff as well. So guys, on a small repair like this, it's absolutely fine. So I've got stuff that I've done years ago and it's perfect. So least filler as possible. Um, get a lot of it and get a lot of filler in your first skim. So then you've got something to work with. Because obviously if you put it in thin and burn it out, you've got to keep putting more and more in. So try and get a lot in your first skim, block it to shape and then so on. But also as well, you want your metal to be finished in at least a 120 something because you don't want the filler or anything to sink into your 80 grit scratches. Do not use a 40. Do not use 40 grit because it just sinks and you can't get the scratches out. It's just a nightmare. So anyway, let's go on to the next stage. All right, so the filler layer is so thin you can actually see the metal through the filler. So I'm going to get this blocked off, get my guide coat on there quickly. And I'm using a 180 to block it as well. So I've got my extraction. Let's get it shaped up, get it feathered out, and let's get some primer on it. All right, guys, I've got my X primer on. As you can see, there's some burn trees in the metal and stuff like that. So I want to get a nice X primer on there. Oop. And I'm going to get a 2K primer on there. Probably put about two coats on. Yeah, so just put your guy coat all over the panel, over the primer. Yeah, so I baked this panel twice. So I cooked it uh, last night before I left, and then I cooked it this morning as well, just to make sure it's properly cured, make sure it's like rock hard. And then now I'm going to block it and just double check it with the greaser as well to make sure I'm happy with the shape of it. All right, that's feeling good now, guys. All you got to do is spread the greaser on it as well. Sort of mimic the lacquer. Even though you've done a good job, it's just good to check it before you get it in the spray booth. Because once it's in the spray booth, you can't do nothing about it. All right, so I finished it all off in 800 now. So I need to decide what color shade to do. There's um, the, the standard color is uh, like a really dark blue and the lighter shade's obviously lighter. The problem is, uh, if you look at this one, this is a light blue, that's dark blue, that's dark blue. The bumper's dark blue. The door's a light blue. The front wing is a light blue and it matches the bonnet as well. If you see this panel here and that one, the color is just completely different from this panel here. You might be able to see here. Yeah, see how dark it is and then light it is. This is plastic and it's obviously not faded as much as the metal. So I'm gonna do two spray out cards, the lighter and the standard shade, which is the darker and then just make a final decision. All right, so to do the color, I need to do a ground coat. So it's asking me for a gray shade ground coat to cover the primer. So this is the tinters for the ground coat. And then this is all the tinters I need for the blue. So this is for the lighter shade. The colors will change slightly between the shades and stuff, but let's get the ground coat mixed up, get some spray outs done. I'll do the light shade first and we'll check it against the car. If I'm not happy with it, we'll do the darker shade. Yeah, if I mix enough ground coat now, it'd be enough for the job as well. So if I go down, Go down through my tinters, get 20 there. Calculate, all right, that should be enough ground coat. Yeah, so, cause I've gone for that amount, all you gotta do is put like 140.2 of this shade in, then uh, uh, erase it and do it again. So for the next shade, then you got 500. So what I do is I always get my bottles out because I don't want to put the wrong color in. So I can just do it in order, pretty simple. So what I do is I put that back away and then get the next shade, next color, Next one, next one. You get, you get it. All 
right, so I got there in the end. I've basically done two sprouts. We've got the original color and the lighter shade. The original dark one is just way too dark. So we're gonna go for the light. They literally look the same, but I'm gonna go for the lighter shade so it all blends in nice. But yeah, what I'm gonna do is basically cover up this area. So when I put my ground coat down, it doesn't go all over the door as well. So the gray coat is gonna cover this area. Yeah, it's come out so good, man. Obviously, I got demask it now. It's quite a fun job to do, but you got to do it carefully as well because you don't want to rip off the lacquer after you've done all the work. There's a couple of nibs in the door and a couple in the quarter panel. So the orange peels come out perfect. It matches the rest of the car. So it's really good. It looks like the factory finish. So what I'm going to just get it out, give it a flat and polish, and then fit it up. All right, so I didn't get no finishing clips of me putting it back together because it was just basically the reverse of what I just I did, what I mean, taking it apart. So, guys, it's not in to get the headlights polished, but as a little freebie for the customer, it's the first job I'm doing for this person, and it'd be nice to just polish the headlights off. I'm not going to start sanding them and clear coating them. I'm just going to quickly buff them up, mask it off, buff it up, so when he picks it up, it just looks more presentable. As you know, they always fade. But I'm going to use a G360, and I'm going to go back with a soft mop as well. And then once I've um, cleaned it, I'm going to put like a little ceramic coat on the headlights. Yeah, guys, it's looking pretty sick now. Let's get it clean, get this polished up, and then get it out and wash it. Trying to show my story, this is history. Now it's not a mystery. Stop without a hating dog, man, this is meant for me. Whatever come my way, this was meant for me. Trying to show my story, this is history. Now it's not a mystery. Stop without a hating dog, man, this is meant for me. Guns be by guns. I'ma keep rapping till I turn into an icon. Back against the ropes, kept swinging like Tyson. Back in the booth now, I'm snapping as a python. Had to rise up to the horizon. Use my words to connect, no Verizon. Speak the truth, I'ma show you, chase your dreams. I'm living proof. Not the industry type, but I'ma grind from the roots. Ooh, see my family struggle from the start. I'm gonna change the trajectory. Put some respect to me. Plant the seeds daily. Foundation, that's the recipe. If you all right, so that came out awesome in the end. It was obviously quite hard to choose a color because there's so many different shades of blue, but I stuck to it and it's come out awesome. Guys, we're going to Jetfest as well on the 7th of April. So guys, if you want to pop over and get a free jet tag, just show us you're following our YouTube channel and we'll give you a free jet tag and a sticker if we've got any there. But guys, I'm so happy with this. We've got um, loads of projects up and coming, but yeah, it's come out really good and I'm happy about it. I'll catch you guys in a bit. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I'm here to be the voice for the people and break the generational curse. Stand for something, and not just fall for anything. 